Hey everyone, here we are, if you can believe it, it's the last day of 2020. As I thought about what I would share with you on this last day of the year, just thinking about 2020, it's a year that has brought us some of the greatest challenges and difficulties that quite possibly any of us can remember. I want us to take time today to pause and to reflect, to consider and to contemplate the view, the perspective from each of our lives as we look around. I believe that God will give us some important insight and motivate us as we move into the new year ahead uh, as we look around. One of the things that I love to do is to watch and observe people at the mall, uh, at the fair is a great place where there's thousands of people, but just taking time to observe people and their behaviors, you can learn a lot. Looking around is important. If you're a safe driver, you're constantly looking around. Hopefully you're always looking forward, but a safe driver is always looking backward and, and is aware of what's going on on either side of them. Uh, a good hunter is constantly looking around as he walks through the woods or sits in a tree stand. But too often we get busy in the hustle and bustle of everyday life that we don't take time to look around. Today I want us to take a look around us, to look behind, to look upward, to look inward and to look forward. First of all, looking back, as we look back over this uh, past year, this, this past fall, we preached through the book of Joshua. And in Joshua chapter four, God instructs the Israelites as they're crossing the Jordan River into the promised land. He said, choose one person from each tribe to pick up a stone as you cross the river into the promised land. They were to erect a memorial, to pile those stones uh, on the other side of the river to serve as a permanent memorial among the people of Israel. This pile of stones would be a reminder to those who were present of their personal experience, what they saw, what they heard, what they felt. God wanted them to always remember what he did for them. And he encouraged them to tell their story and to keep telling it so they would never lose their sense of awe and wonder of God. And so that they and their children and their children's children would always remember what God had done in their lives. I want you to stop right now and consider what kind of memorials you have in your life. We all have memorials in our life, maybe not monuments of stones, but we have memories. There are places, there are people and experiences in my life that trigger memories, much like these memorial stones would have done for the Israelites when God uh, helped them to cross, into the in, cross the Jordan into the promised land. So looking back, we can see where God has brought us from. We can look back and see God's hand at work in our lives, his will and his purpose being fulfilled. You know, they say that hindsight is 2020, but I want you to consider this. 2020 is now in hindsight. Isn't that amazing? And some of you are saying, yes, hallelujah, 2020 is over. But as we look back over our past, over our life, over history, we see Christ dying on a cross for us. You see where God has brought you from and where he has brought you to in your life. It's important that we look backward. We need to look upward. And as we look upward, we see Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 34, he says, What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but he gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. You know, one of the greatest things that you can ever know, have or experience or know is that somebody is praying for you. And what an amazing thought to know that Jesus Christ, God's son, our savior, is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us day after day after day. It's important that we look uh, upward. And the third thing is that we look inward. And what we see is we see Christ. As followers of Jesus, we see Christ living in us. Back to Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 11. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. 
You know, retail businesses will periodically take inventory and, and often it will happen right now at the end of the year. Uh, and so one of the things that we need to do is take inventory of our life, take an honest look at ourselves and examine where we are. Second Corinthians 13, five says, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. It's important that we look inward and see God's spirit living in us. And the fourth thing that we do as we look around is we look forward. And as we look forward, we see uh, the promise of, of, of Jesus to return for us someday. Second Peter chapter three, verse 10 through 14 says, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. And then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. And the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. Look forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. That's what we need to do. We need to keep heaven in focus. We need to keep the fact that Jesus has promised to return for those who are looking for him. And so we need to be ready and living and watching and waiting. Titus 2, 11 to 14 says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we're instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day, when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave us his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. We need to live with eternity in focus. And so let's take a, 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 some time today and in the year ahead to remind ourselves to constantly be looking around to look backward, not to live looking backward in the past, but to realize what God has brought us out of, what he's brought us from, the amazing thing that, things that he has done in our past that will give us faith for our future, to look upward and realize that Jesus Christ, our Savior, is sitting at the right hand of God interceding for us, to look inward and realize that his spirit lives inside of us, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, and to look forward. I don't know that if this could be the year, but we should always be looking ready and waiting uh, for the Lord's return. Let's live ready. Let's live watching and waiting for his return. I'm excited for what the new year has in store. We were we lived with anticipation of what 2020 would bring. And maybe some of you are disappointed as you look back over the year. But in the midst of it, God is working. And I believe that he's going to work in the year ahead. And as we trust him and as we lean into him and as we live for him, I know that God's going to do amazing things in your life, in your family, and in our church and in our community and around the world as we take the gospel, as we live as lights in this world and believe that God has got great things in store for us. Let's trust him. Let's live for him. Let's do amazing things. Let's believe God for great things in this coming year. Have a great new year. God bless you. We'll see you soon.